will say, I'm hungry for God. I want to be in his presence. I want to be pleasing to him. Hallelujah. God said, come on up my hill. I'm bringing you into my mountain. I'm bringing you into my place. I've got a place for you that's greater than any other place in all the world. You're no longer an outcast. You're no longer down there. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm bringing you up to my mountain. I'm bringing you into my holy mountain. And I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Amen. He said, I'm going to bring you up the mountain. And I'm going to bring you on into my house. Come on in. Hallelujah. Amen. If you'd like to pray for a little bit, come on in. I just kind of open the door to you. I'm not letting the high priest do it anymore. Hallelujah. I'm opening the door so that anybody come on in. There's a place for you to talk with me. You don't have to depend on whether the, whether that high priest was a carnal man or a man of spirituality. You don't have to depend upon a man's religion. You're depending upon, hallelujah, Jesus Christ. And he said, whenever you come in, you're going to come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. Amen. I, I, I want to talk to you just for about two more minutes about the blessing in the house. Amen. The blessing in the house. Amen. What I'm talking about is this place called prayer. It's that reward of doing the things that you know what's right. Amen. And being pleasing to him. And when you do, amen, then God says, I'm open a door to my house. I'm going to sit down with you and I'm going to talk with you. Amen. We're going to close out everybody else for just a few minutes. It's just you and I. And we're going to communicate together. Amen. And when you, amen, come into the presence of the Lord and you begin to pray, you've come into the most blessed place that you could ever be. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Set up an appointment to meet with the mayor. Set up an appointment to meet with somebody even on a local level of politics. Amen. Forget about even trying to reach into the state level. And uh, I know better to even think that I could get close to the vice president or president. Ain't gonna happen. I can set an appointment the next day after they dead, you can go see their grave. But the king of glory. Oh hallelujah said to me, you want to come in right now? Come on. I'm opening my... No, I, I did set up an office somewhere away from my house. And you, you're going to come out to the office and I'll meet you there. No, he said, come on into my house. I'm going to bring you into my presence. I'm going to bring you into my power. I'm going to bring you in so that I can call you a son and I can call you a daughter. Oh, Man, I'm, I'm telling you, there is a blessing that we have in prayer. And, I, and, I, and, and again, you know, here we are. It's been, a, it's been a few months that we've just been kind of lingering around, and I didn't even plan on it today. Amen. But here we are at the house. This is the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Amen. Whenever the presence of the Lord is in the place, amen. That's where God's house is. And that is the gate of heaven. Whenever you walk into prayer, you have just stepped to the gate of heaven. And your access point, oh hallelujah, has stepped beyond the earth and into heavenly things. It don't matter what my education is. It don't matter what kind of, what kind of money I have or don't have in the bank. I can brag more about the don't than I can the do. And I can brag more about, and I don't brag about it because I should have got more, but I can brag about the uneducation more than I can the education. Uh, my daughter, uh, I went to Bible college, so I got that on her so far. <laughs> but whenever I step
step into the throne of God. God says, I don't care whether it's an adopted degree or a master's degree behind or in front of your name. What I'm really concerned about is you can step into the step before my throne. Hallelujah. And you come into my house. And the awesome part about it, the doors of the church can be locked on Monday night and you can still come before his house. And you could be in the midnight of your life when everything seems to be turning upside down and you don't know where to turn. First of all, amen, if there's a problem that somebody else can pray for, y'all know my number, give me a holler, we can pray together. You're in the middle of a, if you're in the middle of a trial, amen, my wife and I, we'll get up, it don't matter if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll get up and pray with you. Because we feel like it's important that, there's, that, that we find it together. But we can step into our prayer closet. And that place is the house of God. And it's the best reward that God has for us this side of heaven. There's no place that's better, amen, in the house of God than being in the presence of the Lord. And no place is better. The presence of the Lord is say I have felt his presence even today. And the Lord will touch our hearts. The Lord will speak to us. I feel like the Lord might have been speaking to somebody else today besides myself. The Lord's letting us know that there is a place in me that you can have. It's called the house of prayer. It's my house. It's the place of relationship give a step to warn me the place that you'll find your greatest rewards of the house. Oh, honey, let's stand together this morning. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll bring them to my holy mountain. Make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my own. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Prophetically opening the door to every generation and every nationality. God has opened it to us more than a more than just a I have to. Today when I'm in the presence of the Lord, it's such a privilege and a blessing to be able. Let's love the Lord. Jesus is here right now. Reach out and touch him. My Jesus is here right now and help you receive. Jesus is standing near, waiting your heart to cheer. Jesus is here right now. Only believe. Thank you, Lord. Reach out, touch him. Jesus. 
Awesome, and uh, and uh, and there was a uh, and there was a few uh, kids that came from our church that that I was so proud to say they come to our church. Yeah. And uh, Sheila, Tim, and uh, there were five of them. It was there was five of them that came. Was it Dajé? Dajé. There you go, girl. And uh, I got you. And I, and it, Who else? Help me out with it. Was it Wes? Was it Wes? No. No, it wasn't Wes. Who was it? John. John, give you. No. And, just John. John. And uh, they're standing over here on this side at the end of service. God's blessing was falling on several of them. Oh, yeah, and, the Holy uh, Ghost. And, uh, <laughs> they were feeling the presence of the Lord. Those tears were flowing. And I said, this is what it's all about. I, I want those kids, I want every one of those young people to feel the presence of the Lord and to know, amen, that He is not a distant God, but that He cares for us no matter where we're at. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, there was a song years ago that said, Tears are in a language that God understands. But beyond that, amen, it's awesome to feel the presence of the Lord. I wouldn't trade that for anything. I was so proud of our young people. Hallelujah. And uh, I love them to death. They, they may not understand what I do. I love every one of them. Amen. And this time I'll dismiss the classes to their classes. Amen. I'm opening the Word of God to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 56. Isaiah 56, and we'll begin to read with verse number 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith uh, the Lord unto the eunuchs to keep my Sabbaths and, uh, uh, and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name 
that shall not be cut off, also the sons of, uh, of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, to serve him and to love him, uh, and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Amen. And uh, even in verse number uh, in verse number 7, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here today, touching each heart and each life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. Amen. I, uh, I was reading this passage of scripture and the Lord being, I, was, I felt like the Lord wanted us to speak just a little bit on prayer. And so uh, in some of my research uh, before, I thought, well, I'm going to get a, uh, the world's definition of prayer. And I typed in prayer. And uh, the first thing that came up was not prayer for, uh, of a Christian, but it was prayer of, of the world. And the time of prayer was, uh, was set aside uh, for other religions other than uh, a Christian time. I would say that it's time to pray. It's time for the church to pray. No matter what time of the day it is, it's time for us to be known as a people of prayer. Amen. I, I know that Jesus said, quoting from Isaiah 56, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Now, uh, if we, going back, I, I, I feel like that the Lord, as, as we begin to, to study into this just a little bit farther than, uh, than that, uh, going into the Word of God, uh, there are two uh, groupings of people that are mentioned that... Uh, we may not fall in the one grouping, but for sure, every one of us here would fall into the second grouping of people. The first grouping were the eunuchs, uh, uh, men and uh, women that uh, had been uh, made uh, sterile. They would not be able to have children, and these were separated the scripture said in, in back in the law, they could not come near unto the house of God. And, uh, and then uh, the Bible said, secondly, that uh, there were strangers. And the stranger, those that were not uh, of the people of promise, they could not come close to the tabernacle. That kind of leave you and I out of the, out of the picture, unless you're Hebrew. And uh, if if you are not a natural Hebrew, you'd be stuck outside the gate and wishing that you could worship, and uh, wishing that the presence of the Lord, Amen, would bless you. But uh, but there was this there was this place that God said, now you can come and live among them, but when it comes to the house of God. There's a border for you, and the stranger's got to stay outside here. You've got to stay way outside. But in this passage of Scripture, there's something that happens that I find very interesting. The Lord, in, in a prophetic sense, of course, this is just a, a few chapters. Uh, fifth, chapter 53 was talking about Calvary and crucifixion. Amen. Because in chapter 53 of Isaiah, it said, 
He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Everything that we have hope in, amen, is found in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If it had not been for the cross, uh, really no reason for us to show up today. Amen. But because of the cross, we have a reason, amen, to celebrate the hope of Jesus Christ. I thank God for that hope. Amen. And, uh, and so, again, Isaiah is known as this one that is pushing forward in time and God revealing future genera unto future generations a hope that would step beyond the normal hope. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, he opens doors to those that before didn't have an opportunity, amen, of coming close to the house of God. Amen. Before, amen, before Christ, amen, robed himself in flesh and came and dwelt among us, amen, our border was, if we could just kind of use as an illustration, it was right here. The children of Israel could come on, amen, to an altar and they could find a, a place in God, amen, but uh, people that were not of that, uh, of that particular nationality, if they had blemishes, if there were things and flaws in their life, you can come this far, but you can't come any farther. I'm thankful today that when Calvary came, he broke down every barrier and he said everybody can come into the presence of Almighty God. Anybody can be touched with the glory and the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's no longer a time when, when God would say, Sister Brenda, sorry, I love you, but you're going to have to stay back there. I'm glad that we can say today, amen, that you can step into the presence of the Lord, amen, and find the fullness of joy, amen, that He can give, only He can give. Oh, praise God. Amen. In that Old Testament time, amen, the Spirit of God would move, amen, on a distinct few. Amen. You had, it was considered a tremendous privilege if, uh, if the power of God would move on you for just a few moments. But oh, hallelujah, in the New Testament, amen, when, when the power of the Holy Ghost fell, amen, it opened the door, amen, so that it didn't matter what tribe I was a part of. It didn't matter if my daddy was a preacher or not. I could find the presence of the Lord for myself. I could feel the Holy Ghost for myself. I didn't have to depend upon somebody else's religion to say, amen, the reason I'm in the church is because Grandpa was in the church. But the reason I'm in the church today is because God is my God. Hallelujah. And God has been good to me. And I can feel His presence. Oh, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. And so, and so the Lord begins to give some instructions first to the unit. And uh, to, and then secondly to the stranger, and uh, and uh, he gives them some instructions to bring them in. Now, uh, whenever I was uh, whenever I was a kid, uh, there were two forms of uh, uh, of helping me understand the necessity of working around the house. There was a one that would mean that I got in trouble. I didn't like that kind of, uh, 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 of uh, 
of help, uh, depending on how how bad that I was, depending on the severity of what had happened. And uh, you know, if I, I I had more than one trip where uh, we met with the board of education in the basement, and uh, and, uh, and dad. And would talk to us through that board for just a minute or two. I wasn't a, I wasn't abused, but my dad knew how to use the belt just for a minute, just to get my legs warmed up so that I'd understand. And today I thank God for that. At the time I wasn't so thankful, but uh, you know I'm thankful that uh, that somebody that somebody loved me enough to correct me. And uh, and, and but but there was another form. That, uh, that was used from time to time. And that was, if you get this and this and this done and this extra that's done on top of it, we'll take you fishing or we'll do this with you. And uh, to be totally candid, that kind of worked really good for me. Because I like to go fishing. I do just about anything they ask me to do if they let me go fishing. I just, you know, uh, they want me to weed the whole garden. I, I do my best. I might get some of the wrong plants, but I do my best to weed it. They give me a chance to go fishing. It was the award. It was the blessing. Amen. That was attached to uh, to the job. It didn't say he, it wasn't a matter of it wasn't a job. It's still just as much of a job. Still just uh, just as much of work. But because there was a reward at the end of it, I, I'll be totally candid. The reason I work the job that I work, because every other Friday. If it wasn't for that other every other Friday, you wouldn't see me working there. Uh, <laughs> I like that every other Friday, but I, you know, if, if I didn't get that thing to come every other Friday, nah. <laughs> It's that reward that makes it worth it. Why in the world would I want to get up early, you know, and just go in and say hi to everybody if I didn't, if there wasn't a piece of paper that uh, was put into my bank account that was worth a little bit of money? It just, it just wouldn't. There's no motivation to go to work for nothing. And the, and the Lord, amen, in, in this passage of Scripture, he said, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to tell you, what to do, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you the motivation to do what you do. And uh, and and so uh, I'd like to start in in verse number one of uh, Isaiah chapter 56, and it said, "Keep judgment and keep you judgment and do justice." Uh, for my salvation is near, and my righteousness to be revealed. So he said, there are two things that I'm asking from you, and when I looked up the word justice, it's living right. It was righteousness. And he said, so be honest in your dealing, because there is a reward that's coming. The first reward, amen, of of living right and doing the things that are right and keeping a good judgment is God's salvation is near. And, uh, and, and you can begin to see uh, a revelation of the righteousness of God. That was the first reward. He said, if you'll just do the things that are right, amen, you can, uh, you're stepping closer to the place where salvation lives. Amen. If you're, uh, I uh, kind of put it in today's language, for the person that's sitting in the bar or, uh, or taking some drugs or taking a person's life, uh, stealing whatever, whatever sin that they're involved in, and they're involved in the middle of that sin, God's trying to deal with, deal with them. But because of their, of their disobedience, 
it's hard for God to reach to them because they're not coming close. But a person that's saying, I'm hungry for the things of God. Amen. I want God in my life. Amen. And, uh, and it just because they just hunger for the things of God. If they laid aside some of the activities or the bad activities, they may not even be doing everything that's right. Amen. But if they starting on a path that said, I want to know more about God. Salvation starts coming closer in their life. Amen. And God, amen, if they'll continue on that path, God will reveal His righteousness unto them. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That's why whenever I see somebody that, amen, says, I want to know more about God. Amen. I get excited because I know if there's somebody that's hungry for the things of God, the Bible said, Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Why? For they shall be filled. There is a reward, amen, of seeking God. There is a reward of saying, I want what God has. I'm desiring to know everything that I can about the things of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Whenever church going, amen, is only out of obligation, you ain't going to get as much as you are whenever you say, I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm glad to be in the house of God. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because when we begin to hunger for the things of God, amen, God said, there's a blessing coming your way. There's a promise that's coming your way. Is it always easy trying to serve the Lord? Oh, no. But there is a blessing. There is a reward. Hallelujah. That comes to those that will serve Him with all of their heart. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So he said there's, there's this blessing place. Blessed is a man that keeps judgment and does justice. He said, uh, he said uh, and to the Son of Man that layeth hold, he grabs a hold of the things that are right, in verse number 2, and that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Now, uh, some have identified it as a day, and in the Old Testament it was a day. Amen. But we live in a new, in a new dispensation, and I'm afraid that... Uh, I'm afraid that in our day, amen, there is a lack of, uh, 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 of respect for the house of God on a day, setting aside a time to be with God, setting aside some time at least once a week to be, amen, in the presence of the Lord, amen. I don't want to pollute what God has given me. I want to, amen, enjoy being in the house and in the presence of Almighty God. I want to be, amen, enjoying being in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. He said, if you don't pollute, amen, my Sabbath, and then if you keep your hand from doing evil. He said, these are the things. Amen. That uh, uh, that will help you to step into a blessing. Now, in verse number four, and, and the Bible said, and he's speaking to the eunuchs, and he said, "Thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant." So he said, "There's some things that please me. Are there some things that I?" Expect for an individual that's outside of the parameters. Amen. I expect everybody, but for those that are standing outside the wall, I would expect there to be some things that would bring you closer into uh, in the proximity of where I'm at. Number one, 
Amen. For that eunuch that's hungry for the presence of God. Amen. Keep his Sabbath. But then the second thing he said is choose the things that please me. Amen. I wonder today if every one of us, if we went home and we said, Now God, what can I do with my life? Amen. That would be more pleasing to you than what I've done up to this point. Hallelujah. I, I, you know, my wife yesterday, she said, she told Marissa, and I just happened to be listening in, she said, I have a craving for chocolate. She said, but I, I knew money was a little tight, and so she said, I didn't get any until Friday. And uh, until this Friday, I'm thinking about it, because that's hey, you know. And, uh, and, and, and Marissa said, oh, she said, I've been craving it too. Well, a few minutes later, I tried to make the tea, and there wasn't quite enough sugar to make the iced tea the way that I like it. I said, I need to go to the store. And so she said, we'll pick up some of this and some of that. I went down the candy aisle. And uh, <laughs> I know money's tight. But I brought back those little bitty snack packs of Hershey's and Snickers and uh, Mars bars and Almond Joys and Reese's peanut butter cup. I got a little snack. I got $5 worth of candy and I went and threw it on my wife's lap. She didn't eat them all, so I ate some of them. <laughs> And there's still some left. My daughter ate some of it. But I knew that it would be, it would make my wife smile for a minute. I knew it didn't make her pleased. It wasn't, it wasn't anything big, it didn't cost a lot, just something that I knew that would please her. I also know that when she gets a feeling better, that uh one of these evenings, I better roll that canoe on the top of that car and uh, put the fishing poles on the inside. And we better sneak out and rinse off the lines while we can because it's something that pleases. They tell me, or she tells me, that her child, that they tease her all the time because every day I go to work at 10. Between 9.30 and 9.45, I sneak into that office. And I've got a, a, she's got a cup, it's a thermos cup that'll keep ice all day. And I bring her a fresh cup of iced tea, a 32 ounce deal of iced tea. And she sits on that all the rest of the afternoon. And they tease her about it. But I know that pleases her. And if I knew, and there, here she comes in, now I've got to be quiet about what I'm saying. <laughs> if we could as a people as individuals say God what please is there some small activity that I could do that would make you is there something that I could do or stop it? And I'm not trying to talk for or against anything because if Sister Linda has stuff that, that God would be pleased with that he probably would expect from me. I mean, you know, and, 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 uh, and, 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 and Sister Bass, you know, there might be something that the Lord would deal with in your life that would be pleasing to the Lord. Now, I don't know what it is that would make the Lord the most happy in each one of your lives. Because I'm not a mind reader. And, 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 I, and the Lord didn't anoint me to be a policeman. He asked me to be a pastor. And I'm going to try the best that I can to be a pastor. I don't know what goes on in your house. 
But there's a God that does. And I want to be pleasing to Him. I want the Lord, whenever He looks at me on Monday, to be just as pleased with me on Monday as He was when I was praying Sunday at church. I want Him to be happy with me as I'm going to bed at night and then on Monday night when I wake up on Tuesday I want the Lord to be pleased with me. And the Lord said here's the way that you step from this place into this place. Number one, set aside time for me. Number two, try to be pleasing to me. Let your life, amen, be pleasing unto me. You ain't doing this for anybody else. I, I'm not living the way that I'm living just so that, amen, when it comes to Christianity, I'm not living this way for... And because I want to show mom and dad that, amen, they raised me right. Amen, that's not the reason I'm doing this. The reason that I'm living the way that I'm living is because above everything else, I want to be pleasing to God. I want Him to be happy with me. Amen. And, uh, and then the, the, the third thing He said is to those that will... Hold, amen, take a hold of my covenant. Amen. He said, if you'll, if you'll take a hold of the promises that I have made you, and if you'll make promises to me, there's some things that's going to come to you, amen, that you may not have expected them to come your way. In verse number 5, even unto them, to them that hold my covenant, that keep their hand from evil, that take hold of my covenant, and that please me. To them will I give in my house. Amen. He said, I'm going to take you, and I'm going to bring you into my house. Oh, hallelujah. I'll put you within my walls. Amen. Yeah, I want you to know today, amen, yeah, you're not just, amen, yeah, just a person without any hope. But when you start pleasing and being and doing the things of God, God says, I've got my house that I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up, amen, yeah, every part of my house to you. You can come in to my house any time when you're being pleasing to me. I've got a blessing. Amen. You might have looked at the house on the hill and said, ain't never going to be able to make that house. I'll never be able to make it in there. But if you'll start doing the things that are right, I'll open the door so that you can come in to my house. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to open the, I'm going to bring you within my walls. I'll protect you with my protection. You'll be able to sit at my table. Amen. You're going to eat what I eat. You're going to be blessed with my blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to be blessed with my power. You're going to be blessed with my presence. You're going to be blessed with everything that I have. Because you made it this way. I'm putting it upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my. I, he said it. He said, I'm bringing you into my house with heaven walls. And I'm going to give you, first of all, in my house and within my walls, a place. I reserved a place for you in places that before you couldn't go. And I'm going to bring you into a place where you ain't never been. Hallelujah. And second of all, I'm going to give you a name that is better than sons and daughters. I will give you a name that is that is greater 
than any child that you could ever raise. I'm going to give you a name that is better than saying generations down the road. Amen. They're going to look back at your generation and say, oh yeah, that was my great-grandpa that did that. But that was, that was this relative of mine that did that. I kind of chuckle whenever I hear somebody start bragging about something that happened, you know, a hundred years ago and say, well, that was my kinfolk that had that. Because really, uh, you didn't have anything to do with that. You just you just tagging on for the right. Let me see what you can do, and then we'll go ahead and go from there. You know? But the Lord said, "I'm bringing you into my house, and I'm going to put my name upon you. I'm going to bless you with a name, Amen." that is better than of sons and of daughters. He said, as a matter of fact, I'm going to make it so that this eunuch, this man that never had a hope, amen, of ever having a family and ever having his name passed, he's going to take a name upon himself that is an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. You'll never be able to take this name. He said, if you'll just start walking in the ways of right, you'll just start doing the thing. He said, I'm going to open up my house to you, and I'm going to bless him with the greatest blessing that I can give. I'm going to open my house to him, and I'm going to give him my name. Oh, how good. Man, you talk about a blessing. I mean, God says, look, if you'll start stepping my way, amen, my house will Becomes your house. And my name becomes your name. I'm going to give you an everlasting name. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I want to drop down, amen, in uh, uh, verse number six. Also of the sons of the strength. I believe that's where we come. He said, Here's what the Lord would expect of them. If you'll join yourself to the Lord. I got a few minutes. We can take it. You know, whenever a guest speaker comes, I say, just go ahead and take your liberty. Well, I'm getting ready to take my liberty now. <laughs> when Elijah walked past Elisha, the Bible said that he took his mantle. And he put it upon the shoulders of Elisha. Elisha was busy plowing, and he'd get his crops ready. And whenever he, uh, whenever that mantle came upon him, Elisha turned around and he said, "What was that that happened in my life?" And he let go of that plow. And a long story short, he offered the animal sacrifice. He took the plow and used it as the wood for it. He built an altar. And from that time on, he made a change, a change in his life. And he began to follow in a different direction. When Simon, a man, was on the Sea of Galilee, and the Lord said, let down your net for a trough. He let it down and he pulled it back up with a miracle of all kinds of fish. And, uh, and at the end of that little consultation, the Lord said, why don't you lay your net down and you follow me? And when you follow me, I'll make you to be fishers of men. And Pete and the rest of the boys rolled over their boats and put their nets on top so that they could protect them. And they said, without reservation, I'm starting following the Lord. And the Lord said, what I'm expecting, amen, out of, out of the stranger, if they will join themselves to the Lord, amen, that same type of a passage could be, amen, found whenever there were the, there were the disciples that, Amen. From a distance, follow the Lord. And when his teaching got too hard, 
They said, so long I'm out of here. And they left the Lord, amen, uh, by himself. And those that were apostles, amen, Jesus said to them, those twelve, will you also go away? And Peter said, we made our decision a long time ago. We're joined with you. There's no other place for us to go. I'm joining myself with the Lord. I'm going to follow him till the end. Hallelujah. Amen. He said if they'll join themselves to the Lord. And then if they will serve him. And if they will love the name of the Lord. Amen. They're going to have honor for him. They're going to have a love. Amen. Just because they know the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. My wife was uh, reading a, a missionary story, and one of the missionary kids, whenever he was uh, uh, either in his 11, 12, 13, something in that age bracket, uh, and now he's, he's over 50, uh, he had been over in Africa as a missionary kid, brother and sister uh, Rodenbush's uh, child, and I'm a child now, amen, but uh, while, while he was over there, he and one of his other friends, they carved their names in this tree. And uh, here a, a few years ago, I'm not sure the amount of time because she read it, and uh, here just a few years ago, amen, they went back to that place in Africa that, uh, that uh, Brother Rodenbush's son did, and uh, whenever he went there, he said, I gotta go see that tree. Amen. He, he went there and he said, that was my best buddy, and that's my name. We carved our names in the tree. Amen. And it was the tree was a lot larger. Amen. The, where it was carved was a little bit different in location, but he was able to find it because he he had enough of a companionship with somebody, amen, that they joined together and carved a name. Amen. I I, I know that when, uh, whenever I was, uh, uh, whenever I was engaged, the name Amy sounded awful sweet to me. I like that name. I love the name Amy. I still do. It couldn't have been much better. No, it couldn't have been any better. And uh, I love the name. I love that. You know, whenever, whenever I have been sick, I've been able to call on this name. When I haven't known where my help is coming from, I've been able to call on his name. When my life has been in danger and I, I fell asleep at the wheel. My wife woke up and started calling. We both called on the name of Jesus again. I don't know how we got it from 60 plus down to nothing and just that quick. But hallelujah, I'm thankful that the name of Jesus Christ is a name like any, like, unlike any other. Oh, praise God. When I hit the ice down in Indiana, amen, and I knew that, it, that I, 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 I was done. There was a car that was beside me. I don't know where that car went. But I know that God got me over, amen, into that passing lane. I, I, I'll never forget that police officer as I passed that wreck that was in the slow lane. And he was going like this, and I was going, I would do it if I could. I, yeah. <laughs> and I got that thing off the highway as quick as I could, amen. I was scared to death of that ice, amen. I just, and I knew, amen that it was that name he was saved. I love his name. Hallelujah. There's something about the name of Jesus that when you're baptized in Jesus' name, every sin that you've ever committed, I can't explain it, but I know what happens. Every sin that you've ever committed is completely washed away because of that name. I love that name. Oh, hallelujah. I can't explain it, 
Amen. But when somebody is sick and I've laid my hands on them and prayed in Jesus' name, Amen. I I may not be able to tell everything, but I can tell you, His name still works. I love the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody says that when you start preaching on the name of Jesus Christ, you're just stirring the crowd. No, I'm not just stirring the crowd. I have fallen in love with the name of Jesus. There's no other name but his name. There is no other power but his power. There's no other glory but his glory. I love the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And so he said to the stranger that will join themselves to the Lord and will serve him and love the name of the Lord and be his servants and they will keep, the, keep the, the Sabbath from polluting and set aside some time for the Lord and that will take a hold of my covenant. Amen. The covenant of the New Testament that he was speaking of was the covenant, amen, found in Acts chapter number 2. And verse number 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise or this covenant is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I'm thankful for the day that I repented of my sins. I ask God to forgive me of every sin that I'd ever committed. Yes. And I've been there a few times since then. Yes. More times than I'd like to admit. I've been there again. And I've been there again. And if I live long enough, I promise you I'll be there again. But I can also promise you, he's been faithful to me, and he'll always be faithful to me. Every time that I ask him for forgiveness, I've always found it, amen, to be true to me. Hallelujah. When I felt empty, amen, felt like God was a million miles away, I found places in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Coming into his presence one more time. I love you, God. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to do what's right. And that dry place becomes a well in the midst of the desert. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I just knew if I could get into his presence one more time, it would be all right. I just knew, hallelujah, that empty place was going to be full. said, if you'll, if you'll draw into this place, and if you'll, if you will, if, if you will take a hold of my covenant, he said, if you'll walk into that, he said, I, I'm going to give you my blessing. This is, this is the reward of doing the things that are right. This is, this is what happens when you're pleasing to me. He said, I, I don't know of any greater reward that I could give you. I don't know of anything that I could give you that, that I would feel would be the ultimate reward. There's nothing more important to me than opening this up to you. You've been at the bottom of the mountain. You couldn't come into my presence. But what I'm going to do, because you're trying to do what you know is right, You've been loving my name. You've been setting some time aside for me. He said to you, I, amen, I will bring into my holy mountain. Amen. The psalmist said, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Hallelujah. And who shall stand in his holy place? He said, I just want to know how do I get up there? And the Lord said, it's the man. 